Senate Democrats poised to pass that new spending bill over the weekend, but that isn't stopping over 230 top economists from sending a letter to leaders of Congress warning the bill would make inflation worse. Let's get the read from Dave Dotson, lecturer at the Stanford School of Business. Dave, uh, why, why, why did their interpretation of this bill, why is it different than, for instance, Moody's or, some, uh, or CBO? Yeah, I think the whole notion that the bill is going to affect inflation or not is crazy, frankly, because the world doesn't move that fast, and sure as heck Washington doesn't move that fast. There's going to be some changes in tax incentives. There's going to be a minimum tax and corporate tax, but all of that is going to take 18 to 36 months to play out, where we have an inflation problem that's happening right now. So I think the idea that it's going to move it up or down is insane. So and, have any impact. Right. And to that point, even the CBO says the first four or five years are going to be treacherous, right, on the, on the spending side, the, the inflationary side. I, I know everyone's looking at the Fed to sort of reel this in, but it it's makes their job a lot more difficult when we keep spending this type of money. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, there's three things that are driving inflation right now. Five trillion dollars that we threw into people's mailboxes. Then we had a scarcity of goods. So now everybody's got cash, but they can't buy it because of supply chain issues. Of course, that's going to drive prices up. And then the energy shock that happened with Ukraine. Those three things are going to come down. We know that. What we don't know is whether we're going to be in this wage price spiral, which is why actually today's jobs report is so fascinating, which I think today's jobs report is, is anti-inflationary. Anti-inflationary. Why is that? Uh, the the uh, the hourly wages were higher, uh, and to your point, it feels like I mean they're talking about employers hoarding workers now because there's so few available. Okay, so here's here is the key to the jobs report. It's not about job growth. Normally, the amount of available jobs and job seekers is almost always the same number. But we had this crazy flip flop during COVID, and we've had this period of time where available jobs greatly exceeded job seekers. We did not create 529,000 jobs. We filled 529,000 jobs, and we filled them because employers have had to use incentives and beg people to come work. And of course, a lot of that is driving wages up. Today, we have a about the same number of jobs that we had entering COVID, which means that the pressure is coming off employers. They don't have to beg workers like they used to. Right. And, and, and so as we fill those positions, the pressure to raise wages to try to fill must have jobs right. is going to be coming down. Right. Great, great, great point. I could have used you in the A block. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, Dave. Have a great weekend.